That's probably a better idea. Yeah, oh, so we gotta go. Yo! We can blame China for these masks. We can. This uh, channel is actually our kind of respite from China. Yeah. We don't like to talk about China, but at the same time, this is why we're wearing face masks and this is why we have to self-quarantine and go absolutely crazy. Cooped up and we barely get a chance to get out of the house. Yeah, look at this. Masks. There's Social like a cop thing. car in the background there making sure people keep their distance, which is kind of cool, I suppose. It is, but it's kind of like China followed us here. It certainly, certainly is like that. Listen. One thing that's fantastic about today though, and because it's such a beautiful day, is we decided, you know, we've had a friend who's got a package waiting for us in, in Oceanside for the longest time. We thought, it's such a good day, let's take the Corvettes, the C3s, let's go all the way down, pick up the package and keep going all the way down to San Diego, okay. and then we can turn around and come back. Cool. I mean, let's face it, the natural habitat for a Corvette is kind of Southern, Southern California. Southern California. I mean, we've got the palm trees, we got sunshine, we got beaches, it's beautiful out here. We got people giving us the thumbs up, the wave. Yeah, I mean, even like everybody who walks past the cars are asking what year they are. And, yeah. you know, it's the guy like, drove by in a more modern one, a C5. He, yeah. he was curious. Absolutely, probably the worst generation, but uh, still a good car. Subjective, but I agree. <laughs> still, still a good car, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a fantastic day. So why don't we just get in the cars, keep driving, and let's talk about the difference between the two and kind sure. of like, uh, Hopefully we can help people decide whether they should, like you, just buy your car as it is. Because you've done nothing to it, basically. Nope. Uh, Except dye the interior. Yeah, you didn't even change the oil. No. Didn't need to. It's a new engine. And uh, my one, which I have for the last, I don't know how many months, uh, just been building from scratch because it was completely wrecked and it didn't have an interior. And the engine didn't run. Right. And the suspension was all wrong. And the wheels were all wrong. Yep. And the brakes were all wrong. Yep and the exhaust was all wrong yep anyway could keep going on but let's just hit the road shall we sounds good beautiful day let's go ride or drive yeah mine doesn't sound nearly as good it sounds like shit <laughs> I think yours sounds good, it just needs a louder exhaust. Yeah, that's correct. That's my meaning. Okay. All right, turn it around. Yeah. Oh, I you see. got it? Yeah. So, Seamilk, uh, what does your car actually like to drive? Well, first let me talk about it a little bit. This is a 74, and you guys know that in California, you can't really modify cars if they were made after 1975, so that's why I bought it. But. The problem is, when I saw yours and how much work you were gonna have to do to it, I was like, why not spend like a little bit more money, so 10 grand, right? And just get one that's already done. And it is already done. If you yeah, guys know, the, the 74 was awful. It had like 175 horsepower or something ridiculous in a sports car. So the guy before me, he had spent all this money and. Winston and I estimate they probably put thirty to forty thousand dollars into this car because they had the fiberglass done. So they also did an engine swap, yeah. a full engine swap with a modern, not a modern, an old tech three hundred and fifty Chevy, but it's you know it's new. And uh, you know, his dyno tested at four hundred and sixty horsepower. Now, what I wanted to point out, what that actually means, thank you. What that actually means is that you think four hundred and sixty horsepower is a lot, and it is quick. Hang on, right? Sorry. What? <laughs> what? I made a mistake. Why? Yeah. Can we turn around? Hey. Sorry, wrong turn, yeah. All right, just hold on a second. Once he gets in front, he's going to guide you around. Okay, thank you. Where are you trying to go? Oh, we were just trying to actually go along the coast. The coast? Took, yeah, it's took the wrong, wrong turn. Ap apologize. It's all good. Okay, cool. I'm assuming your friend behind you, Jim. Yeah, yeah, same. He's following me. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Okay, thank you. 
Cheers. Thank you. Well, that was a mistake. That was. <laughs> Why? The GPS told me to go here. It's so confusing. The GPS thinks you're like, you're Middle? supposed to go here, but you're not. No. Thank you. Um, you know what's funny is if that happened in China, we would be. <gasps> oh, yeah, we would have ended up like in prison or something. <laughs> yeah. In this, if this, in this day and age. This, this is the correct way. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that intermission with the military, the very, very friendly folk. Um, anyway, so yeah, 460 horsepower sounds good, but when you're when you have it in a chassis of a car from 1974, it does not feel good. I'm telling you, it is the most crazy, shitty feeling ever because there's no traction control, there's no modern tech. It's on like basically leaf springs. Yeah, it's still an old car, um, but at the same time, it's complete, and I can turn it on and it goes right. Yeah. So yeah. for me. To sum it up, this beautiful sounding V8 that doesn't have to pass smog, it's reliable as all hell because it's basically new, engine wise. Yep. Uh, it's great. It's a great little get go around. Now the gearing sucks uh, because it's oh, a yeah. four speed and they changed the rear diff. So it actually like doesn't, it, when it gets up to speed in the highway, it's basically revving out. Yeah. So yeah, we got some, we got some attention. Um, nice. But yep. anyway, all in all, like for what it is, cars back then suck. We know that. Yeah. This is a very good example of a C3 Corvette that's already been done. And I'm very happy I didn't have to do anything to it like yours. Now, why don't you tell me about yours? Well, okay. Uh, first of all, I, I prefer... I, I do prefer some things about the 68 styling, but I prefer sure. some things about your styling too. Like, I, pre sure. I don't actually like the, the steel bumpers or chrome bumpers and right. stuff. But all of that aside, I wanted a project car, remember, like we just got to the sure. States and I'd been starved of any kind of like ability to go and work on my cars, right? Right, right. And I didn't have any cars, so I, I needed something I could wrench on and I thought it'd be perfect. I thought, hey, look, it's kind of cheap in comparison to what you're paying anyways. I paid half, right? I thought, yeah. hey, it's simple. The parts are going to be cheap because, you know, it's uh, America. I'll just be able sure. to buy all these little parts and put it together. I just did not realize how much time uh how much hard work and how expensive right. it was going to end up being because i was doing it like every month i could afford i would save a little bit of money to put into the car you know sure sure so you're spending like 300 bucks here 500 bucks there 800 here you know like depending on what you have to do and uh it ended up costing me well probably more than what you paid your i didn't keep exact track but probably more than what you ended up paying for your car that actually works I think uh, you're like two grand over mine. Yeah, and the thing is, this car still is way worse than yours in the power department. Um, I would say reliability-wise, it's probably good because I've redone like the whole engine. Uh, but it's not, it's, it's not as much fun and it's not as flashy as yours. Uh, and there's still a lot that I need to do before it gets to the point where I'm happy that it's, it's done like your one is, you know? Right, I mean like, you're not a big power guy, but there is, when you have an old muscle car, it's kind of like, you should have some power. Yeah, it's supposed what do to. You, what, do you what do you estimate you're putting out? Uh, somewhere in the 200s, I think. Because look, it's it's not a slouch, but it's got the original gearing. So my, my car actually is, is, believe it or not, faster than yours. Uh, so, you know, it's- that's, that's, a bit of a, that's a bit of a lie, but you can explain. Well, not, not like from a zero to 60, uh, Six, not even close. 60 cents but if i uh, you and me were to get on the highway i could actually get up to a higher speed because my revs won't go through the roof so right because yours wasn't mess, messed with it yeah. stock gearing i could basically if i wanted to i could cruise oh your indicator's on by the way thanks okay something's uh, never changed yeah no, something's never changed no what i was saying is like if uh, we were to get on the highway i can cruise very comfortably hey look another c3 in the parking lot there blue one. No way. Yeah. Hey, look at that. It's in terrible condition though. Yeah, you usually are. Uh, anyway, like uh, I can cruise very comfortably at about 70 miles an hour and I'm sitting at like less less than 3000 RPM, right? Yeah. Uh, but you on the other hand, if you were going 70 miles an hour, you're at max RPMs, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I can get up to n about 90 on the highway, but I'm basically at the red line. No, I'm past the red line. Yeah, you're past the red line. Because like when I get to 90, I'm starting to get higher up there. 
Uh, that's the thing though, like you want to be able to comfortably drive and still have, you know, you want to be cruising on the highway at about two and a half thousand, three thousand RPM max, right? Sure. Because these sure. engines, they only go up to like five thousand RPMs before they hit the red line. Yeah. So yeah, I could get a better top speed, but getting to that top speed would take a lot slower than yours. Sure. Now before we get into like actually what's, if it's worth it or not, I want to I want to put this out there. Whether you get a terrible one or yeah. not, yeah. Whether you get a built one like mine or you have to put in a ton of work like yours, it's still worth it in the grand scheme. In that, these cars get just as many looks as exotics do, and I'm not joking. No, you're absolutely right. The amount of people we're that, driving, yeah. right? We're driving ten thousand dollar cars, which means nothing. I mean, the Hyundai Sonata in front of me, right? Yeah. That car is up to three times more than what I paid for yeah. this new, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Yet I'm driving around getting just as many waves as a guy in a, in a classic Ferrari or a classic Jaguar. Exactly, that's what makes these cars so much fun to drive is the reaction you get from people. And yeah. uh, I mean, you feel special and it is a special car to drive because they're is. so gorgeous, you know, they, they, they look good. fantastic. Yeah. Get the rivet. Yeah. Your people love better. it, people love the they, car. They do, they do. <laughs> Machine gun. Yeah. Man down, man down. <laughs> Um, yeah, left, left. I'm wave. Sorry, go ahead. I'm waving yeah. to you for a reason. What's that? And that reason is that to prove that this is not pre-recorded. Oh, okay. We're live. We're live. Yeah, I'm coming to get you. Hang on. This is live. We're actually talking. Nice. Sounds good. I'll give a little rev too. Yeah. Um, we're talking through a headphone. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's While not a good this. it's not a very good setup. Anyway, so Seamilk, we've got to get we've got to get into the whole worth it thing, right? Sure. So, uh, <laughs> how do we approach this subject in a gentle manner? Well, what I can say is that again, just to say, either way, it's worth it because the cars are not in, innately not that expensive compared to something else you yeah. can buy, right? But when it comes down to it, if you have a choice that despite both of these cars being worth it because they're quite inexpensive for a classic muscle car that gets more looks than really anything I mean you're talking about classic Camaros yeah which was a much worse car if I got a Camaro in this year yeah it's a much worse car than a Corvette in every way shape and form but it's much more expensive for some reason right. these are these are pretty good value for money but if I were to buy one which I did I'm very happy that I actually bought one that was already done and the reason being is that I've seen what you had to do to this stupid thing. It's insane. And you ended up spending more money for less performance than I did. You know, the thing is, if I were to sell this car right now, okay, after all the time and money and hours and stuff I've spent fixing it up, which, don't get me wrong, was very rewarding. It was a very rewarding process to, to fix it, but it was also exhausting. Uh, I did learn a lot. But if I were to try and sell this car right now, I would not get the value that I put in out. I would probably be able to sell it for like eight or nine, maybe 10 if I'm lucky. You know what I mean? So the fact of the matter is whoever would have bought this car, once I finally got it perfect to my liking and I sell it, I will not get a lot of money for it. But that guy's going to get a no. hell of a lot of value. You know what I mean? Right, right. And the thing, this is how I put it. You're a, you're more determined to fix cars than I am, right? Yeah. That being said, if I ended up with your shit heap, I wouldn't have the t determination. I'd keep trying stuff like here and there, but it'd be years before it was even like remotely okay. And that's why if you're a normal person, you're probably not gonna wanna put in that effort. And it's better just to spend a little bit more money. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, look, that, that was the reason I got the car is I wanted something to work on. So I don't regret it from sure. that point of view. Right. But, you know, in hindsight, it's not really worth it unless you want that sort of pleasure of fixing it yourself, you know? Right. Because but, that's, but let me that's, say this. Yeah. It doesn't matter because even if you ended up with mine, which is done, there's yeah. still stuff you could have worked on. Yeah. There's still I mean, stuff yeah. you can upgrade. It. So absolutely. it doesn't matter. So you... There, there was no advantage in the end to buying your car. It's not like you can't, there, it's not like you can't fix this one. Yeah, that's actually very you know true. I mean? That there's a, yeah, there's still a lot wrong with your car that could be fixed and upgraded. And that's why of course. Uh, I prefer the Firebird, you know, because right, at least right. with the Firebird, I've got a platform that kind of all works, it's all there, you 
know. Uh, keep right. going. Yep. Oh man, we're gonna get separated by an Almera or a Lexus. That's okay. Uh, yeah, at least with the Firebird it's all there, so I could just kind of fix it up a little bit and then improve it. Whereas this, just to get it into a running, driving car, it took me months, you know? Right, so annoying. Right. So, so annoying. But, like, let's be honest though, like, what, yeah. what car is getting more looks? What, between uh, this and your the Firebird? Firebird and your C3. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the C3 for sure. I mean, Of course, it looks more exotic. It is, and it is more exotic, and it's more valuable. Uh, the, yeah. the thing is, the Firebird's more of a personal thing, so, you know, I'll take the hit on that. I understand, and there's nothing, nothing wrong with that, but I think your point is that to buy something in good working order, if you're talking about a classic car, doesn't mean that you don't have work ahead of you. Yes, It's yes. better to buy something a little more expensive, so you have to do less big jobs. Yeah, absolutely, because, you know, the fact that I had to replace the, the brakes and the front hubs and the, the wheel bearings and uh, the suspension right. components and, you know, like basic things that I wouldn't want to have to replace, you know, like I had to redo the whole rear suspension, leaf spring, did my own alignment, right. uh, you know, right. I had to take the whole engine apart, man. You know, right. the top end and the bottom end. It was not an easy thing. Uh, no, and I could no. have rather been spending that time fixing the cosmetics or, you know, upgrading things. You know what I mean? Uh, I totally agree. There's one thing, though. Like, if you buy one of these old C3s, it doesn't matter how much you pay. It's still going to need work. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's my point. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, would, I mean, these cars are 50 yeah, years old. They are. They are. I mean, mine's... My, we hadn't even landed on the moon yet. You <laughs> I know? know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I, I do want to give a shout out to uh, the Corvette Ben because if it wasn't for him and his channel, uh, I mean, I would it would have been a lot harder because the guy, that's all he does basically is fix old C3s. So he's got tons of videos on like all the ins and outs of what you might find, you know, to fix. So for me, it was like a almost like a, a free in instruction manual on how to fix a lot of the problems that I faced. So if you're into C3s, you should check out his channel. Come next to me. Yeah, look at you. So, Zemo. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I think like, not to debunk all the people that say that you should just buy a wreck, but for me, you absolutely should spend a little bit more money and fix stuff that you want to fix because any old car is going to have problems anyway. Yeah, I am going to agree with you 100%. Um, I, do, I do regret not spending more. I thought I would save money, but it doesn't work that way. Honestly, if you're in the, if you're in the market for buying yourself a classic car, don't try and take on something as big as I did. Get something that's a running, driving car first and take it from there. So is there anything you'd like to tell our subscribers before we sign off? Yeah, we should uh, catch you on the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We love, we love these cars and we hope you love them as well. You'll see a lot more of them and the other cars we do as well. So thanks for being patient with us on Worthless Whips and uh, we'll see you next time. Absolutely guys, just keep the rubber on the road and enjoy life. That's the most important thing, if you can because that's what cars are all about. So guys, since we own these cars and we're not going to be selling them or anything like that, you can expect to see a lot more about these cars in the future. We've got a lot of tests to do. We're going to take them and dyno test them. We're going to do all sorts of challenges, go on a long road trip, do miles per gallon tests, things like that. I, of course, will continue to improve my C3. It still needs a lot of work before it reaches even close to the performance that Seamilks one has. And, uh, you know, these are just going to be a, a labor of love. So you can look forward to seeing a lot more of these cars in the future. Thank you to everyone that supports Worthless Whips on patreon.com slash Worthless Whips. You guys support the channel. You keep us going. And uh, you, you guys can actually get behind the scenes stuff and vote on the cars that we end up working on. Thank you so much for supporting us and we'll see you on the next episode.